All right, so today I am recording some commentary for the top eight match between Symbol Man and Jaded Trekkie. We've got Death and Taxes going up against Breach Storm. Um, two of them are, both decks are pillars of the, the format. Um, of course, Storm always has the potential to go off, uh, especially if it's on Lotus, and I believe Jaded Trekkie is. Um, let me see if I can pull up his list real quick. Just a glance. Uh, Breach Storm. Yes, Black Lotus. Um, so, you know, you can get some very quick starts off of Lotus. And at the same time, Death and Taxes is pretty well positioned to threaten Death and Tax, or er, threaten the Breach Storm deck with, um, you know, putting pressure on the board while getting disruptive hate bears to slow the the breach deck down um, so this can obviously go either way I think uh, I think it's probably pretty even I mean obviously draws depending um, death and taxes has some very strong hate cards uh, Archon of Emeria being probably one of their best uh, Thalia um, both Thalias are probably fine. Slowing down their lands is a nice spot to be. So it looks like um, Jaded Trekkie is playing a creature. Um, is that Tinderwall? Uh, yeah, it looks like a one mana creature. A zero two maybe. So probably Tinderwall. I can't quite make it out. The webcam um, is. <laughs> uh, not that sharp, but odds are good. He's, you know, finding a duel and has dropped some some bonus mana for later turns. Kithion's a good start for Death and Taxes. Nice little aggressive one drop. Um, not a lot of disruptive creatures in the one casting cost slot. Uh, Esper Sentinel is probably one of the few, um, but uh, other than that, all you'd really like to see is probably a Mother of Runes or um, something like that to help protect your hate bears to, to keep Storm from, you know, clearing the way and then going off through them. But opening with a 2-1 is a nice, uh, nice beginning to putting the pressure on the Storm deck. Okay, more fetching. At this point... You know, the Breach Storm deck is going to want to just set up as much as it can while keeping um, Death and Taxes from uh, locking them out with the Hate Bears, but it's more of a overcoming them um, situation than a preventative. There's not a lot of uh, counter magic and removal in the Breach deck, generally speaking. So. Mostly you're looking to remove the one or two key pieces that are holding you back and then go for it once you've got your setup, once you have the Breach and the Lotus effect ready to roll. Um, of course, Breach Storm doesn't actually have to go off with Underworld Breach. Um, you've got uh, more standard Storm draws with um, the... Uh, Peer into the Abyss, and um, other effects like that, the pitch your hand, tutor for three things, you can do lots of uh, lots of spicy setups with those. So, looks like he discarded a Preordain and a Strike It Rich with that Fateless Looting. The Tinderwall, if memory serves, sacrifices for two red, so um, red mana is not too big of an issue at the moment for him. It is still primarily probably just looking for the right pieces, so hopefully he is able to assemble his uh, Underworld Breach in time. Now turn two is going to be a big one for Symbol Man, depending on what he has available. 
cavern of souls is fine probably not super relevant in here like i said i don't think uh oh okay so we have an Aethersworn Canonist. Um, doesn't stop multiple Lotuses from being played, but it would prevent the um, Brain Freeze afterwards. Uh, if you Once you've cast Underworld Breach, you're no longer allowed to play any other non-artifacts while Aethersworn Canonist is out. And I suppose Tinderwall's a 0-3, which is why Kithion didn't swing. But, uh, okay, we've got an Entomb for Lion's Eye Diamond. So, Jaded Trekkie is still setting up. Um, I imagine he's already figured out or planning on how he's going to deal with the Canonist. Um, there, are, there are removal spells in the Breach deck. Um, some of them even use Lightning Bolt to finish opponents off as an option, but um, there's also usually Abrupt Decays and other... Oh, there's Lightning Bolt. Uh, Lightning Bolt on the Canonist, of course, um, since Kithion is not actually slowing the Breach deck down. We're going to have like a Duress? No. Dark Ritual. So three black into... Is that a Grim Tutor? Okay, he's going to crack the Tinder Wall. Underworld Breach. Okay, so um, he should be good to go. He's got enough cards in his graveyard that he can replay lead, uh, entomb for Brain Freeze, and just uh, end it immediately, essentially. Um, and that's a turn two kill, even through a disruptive two drop on... Uh, on symbol man's side, um, this is deterministic unless um, symbol man's sitting on some free interaction, which uh, is one of the things death and taxes is not usually doing. Um, so it looks very likely that uh, Trekkie's going to be able to take this down. Um, he is spending one of the black. Uh, looks like he entombed a brain freeze. And is now getting the lead to make the blue to play the brain freeze and can now um, fill his graveyard with his deck and close the game out in uh, easy fashion. I don't know what, I mean, um, it looks like the lightning bolt got exiled, so that'd probably be a finish with the tendrils of agony or something along those lines, but um, yeah. That's game one. Just a very, very strong start from the Breach Storm deck. There's not a lot that Death and Taxes really could have done about that. Even um, even a Thassa wouldn't have been good enough because there was a spare mana floating around to uh, to pay extra on the Lightning Bolt. So sometimes storms just Storm decks just get those hands, and there's not much you can do about it. So they are shuffling up for game two. Uh, being on the play will definitely give Simple Man a better chance. Um, they would. It, the Death and Taxes decks very much prefer getting their fast mana quickly so they can drop the, the more disruptive creatures out of the gate. Um, mana Crypt being probably the, the best one they can hit. You know, if you can land a uh, if you can land a three drop that slows the opponent down, like um, Big Thalia, uh, and just make every one of their lands come into play tapped, make their fetch lands take two learn two turns to uh, to actually get you any mana. Um, you are slowing them down enough that just the pressure of having bodies on the board plus that can be enough. But a good Lotus draw can still kind of power through it sometimes, so no guarantees. Storm Storm just always has the threat of uh, going off, basically. We'll see if they keep their hands. Let's 
Symbol Man is definitely incentivized to mulligan um, aggressively to find something good uh, in this matchup. And the Breach deck, of course, also uh, wants to have a quick start if it can, or have a answer or two in hand to the disruptive elements that Death in Texas is going to drop on it. So, it uh, looks like Simple Man's keeping seven. Shaded Shrekey is mulling. see if the six is satisfactory. Yep, keeping the six, putting one back, and Symbol Man should be leading the game off. We have Planes and Isamaro. Okay. Oh, and a uh, Mana Crypt. Mana Crypt turn one, um, even without a play for it. It's an interesting, um, I imagine not wanting to have it duressed or something. Thought seized is the impetus for dropping it immediately. Um, it's too bad there was no, you know, three drop to go along with it, but um, maybe there will be a spicy four drop next turn or just two good two drops. Sometimes that's enough. Shrekies fetching for Underground Sea. Is there going to be a turn one play? I imagine. Otherwise, probably no reason to crack immediately. Now is it going to be a cantrip to find something? Or is it going to be a setup piece? Okay, sleight of hand. Look at the top two, take one, other one goes on the bottom. Flipping for the mana crypt. Um, the Individual damage pings are not going to be too big a deal here, really, even if uh, Symbol Man lost every single one of them just by continuously playing creatures, that should easily race it. And Jaded Trekkie is not set up to, to <laughs> win a race that way, so um, barring, I guess, a bunch of bad Mana Crypt rolls and then just a tiny Tendrils uh, pile or something it's not gonna matter okay so we see luminous uh aspirant um it's a good one for increasing the clock it's a plus one plus one counter every turn is that was the face down something can't be a morph um i huh Okay, well, the counter goes on Isamaru, swing for three. I, I do not know what the face down card is, because a morph would have been um, three mana, and simple mana only has access to four total. So. Okay. Still not sure what's happening. It's maybe it's supposed to represent a token or something, um, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure what effect produced it. In any case, more pressure on the board. It's fine um, to increase the clock, whatever that is representing. Um, Dialogue vision. It's like an impulse, except it doesn't put the rest of the cards on the bottom of your deck. It just leaves them on top. And it looks one deeper and is a sorcery. So, you know, it's very much not an impulse, but uh, can be very good for combo decks that just want to get 
a few specific things. Um, we'll see if Jaded Tricky finds what he's looking for. Should be at 16 right now with the Isamaru swing. And with Luminous, um, the clock goes up every single turn, so it'll be, I assume the token's like a 1-1 one, one or a 2-2 two, two or something, but uh, that'll be basically a turn, two-turn clock, assuming any other um, creature hits the board this turn. So the, the clock is ticking for Trekkie to see if a breach kill is ready to go or if it's going to be a little bit too slow. Okay, it's not a creature. I, I still don't know what that token is. Um, <laughs> but uh, so it'll be a swing for five right now with Isamaro having two counters and the aspirant on. Oh, Armageddon. Interesting. Okay, uh, the, the Mana Crypt does not die, um, notably from Armageddon, but the other two lands do. And uh, resetting the the mana that Trekkie had built up is probably about as good a situation as you're going to get. So Trekkie should be at 11 at this point, um, with another fetch down to 10. So two swings from Isamaru and Luminous will put it away. Um, and as I said before, even if every single one of these Mana Crypt flips has been lost, it's still not going to uh, create lethal. The, the clock is faster the other direction. But it looks like Tricky has something going. Ritual, okay. Is Tricky going to go for it, or just... Pop out a tutor. I mean, there's been some time to craft the hand. Okay, Toxic Deluge. All right, so Deluge for four, presumably putting Trucky down to six life, um, but clearing up the board. A very important uh, piece of the puzzle to not dying in the next turn or so. Well, now the Mana Crypt could be potentially lethal, but odds are decent that Symbol Man can pull out of it with. Uh, no, Wasteland? Okay. No threat. We have Pass Back. <laughs> So Crypt uh, continues to check and see if, okay, we've got an Aether Vial. Still no lands on Trekkie's side. Okay, it looks like Odd is what uh, is damaging Symbol Man. So most of the rolls I've seen so far have been even, meaning not a lot of damage taken from the Crypt. Okay, there's another hit. Vial's ticking up. Uh, Trekkie has his first land out in a few turns. There's a planes. So, kind of reset the situation here. Um, except Trekkie's at six, and Symbol Man's taken a few hits from the, uh, from the Crypt. Stoneforge Mystic is probably going to grab... Um, I'm not sure. Not a lot of disruptive equipment, so you probably just want something to up your clock as much as possible. Um, Umezawa's is a decent choice. Um, if you're concerned about the Mana Crypt self-damage, then maybe you do Shadow Spear instead. But um, I don't think any of the Death and Taxes decks run Cauldra Completed. So, no surprise, 5-5 five, five indestructibles. 
in Jada Trekkie's future. Okay, Sword of Fire and Ice. Um, that's a good one for, for up in the clock. No, nope, changing, not sure. Hmm. Yeah, that one is um, three to cast, two to equip, so. Okay, Lion Sash, that's actually, that makes sense. Um, it is an equipment uh, and also a creature, but it serves to let Symbol Man um, eat uh, dangerous cards out of the graveyard and just reduce the graveyard overall in the face of Underworld Breach um, while giving a slowly growing clock. Um, and that's also playable off of Aether Vial, so probably the best choice to make here. Going into Trekkie's turn, uh, looks like Trekkie's doing another fetch, so it would be down to five. Um, with the Lion Sash and the potential of playing another Plains, that would be a total of four damage uh, coming from Symbol Man next turn, so Trekkie really needs to find something to go off with here, if possible. Once you're at one life, there's not a lot of options. Um, all your fetches are turned off. There's no <laughs> Grim Tutors in your um, in your hand that can help you. So we'll see what he has. Okay, ransack the lab. Um, look at the top three, take one, the rest go in the graveyard. So we'll see. I suspect that means uh, not going off this turn unless there's a Lotus into Breach happening. But technically, Shrekie still has one extra turn since this should only, ooh. Okay, Tomic, not the Lion Sash. I guess the Lion Slash doesn't actually present the highest clock um, without drawing a, another planes, and it's probably better to hold the planes, hold the mana up to disrupt um, mid combo. Uh, okay, I still don't know what that's supposed to be, but um, okay, looks like it was good enough. Oh, it must have been Fortell. Uh, it was. It was the Fortell spell that um, gives a creature plus one, plus one, and double strike. I can't remember the name of it. Kaya's Guile? No, that's, that's a different one. Kaya's Might? Something like that. Um, yeah, generally, that's not one that you see in every Death and Taxes deck, but it can um, close out a game. And as we saw there, it... It did, uh, it did end the game before Trekkie was able to storm off. Okay, it looks like we've got a mulligan from one side. Trekkie is fetching. Uh, being on the play is obviously nice for the storm deck. Being able to, to get set up before any disruptions possible, for as long as possible. Um, we'll see if Symbol Man got another fast mana start. Um, it definitely seemed like that helped the the Armageddon um, wiping out a couple of Trekkie's lands. Uh, definitely seemed to put him back far enough that um, Death and Dax was able to close it. So um, if you can get another start like that, there's a good chance. Um, or, you know, just a good setup of disruptive creatures, but still, okay, Thoughtseize. So Trekkie is proactively protecting the combo, um, seeing what he's up against right now. Uh, oh, there's a Crypt, um, White Plume. 
Spirit of the Labyrinth and a uh, Aetherstorm Canist. Oh, wow. Did Symbol Man have to mold a four, I guess? That's intense. Okay, well, there's a planes off the top. Um, yep. That is a rough start for Symbol Man. Obviously, losing one of your only mana sources on the first turn is not where you want to be. But uh, Spirit of the Labyrinth and um, Canonist are, are nice to have out going into Breach Storm. Um, Spirit doesn't shut down the combo per se, but it makes it a lot harder to set up with the cantrips and uh, such that Breach Storm likes to run. Um, and White Plume Adventurer is uh, a surprisingly aggressive start. Um, it's a creature that, um, you know, gets the initiative going, which means the first one is just a basic land, but after that you can, you know, grow a creature, um, and then you can uh, dome an opponent for five um the the undercity is a very powerful dungeon so we see an opt from trekkie looked like he was happy with what's on top and is passing the symbol man draw another mana source no but a one drop um i think that's like whoa it's a two one for one that exiles a creature when it comes enters the battlefield. Or maybe it's any card um, from the graveyard. No, I think it's just creatures. And like you gain a life if it's a dragon, something like that. But two one for one, you know, gets something on the board at least. Still doesn't look great for Simple Man here. Um. But Trekkie is not uh, yet ready to go off. Looks like a transmute for Underworld Breach. Yes. Um, if this is a mana source and Aether Sworn Ked Nest comes down, that could keep Trekkie from going off. Uh, no, um, that's a Dryad Milton, also actually a very nice um, creature in this situation. Any instants or sorceries that would hit the graveyard get exiled instead, so uh, a Brain Freeze, for example, um, does not get to be escaped in multiple times, it just gets exiled. Okay, we've got a Grim Tutor from Trekkie. Um, Trekkie down to 13 off of fetch lands and damage and life loss so not facing down lethal but getting lower i expect this is probably going to be a lotus although we don't get to know for sure um but Trekkie does still need to find something to handle the militant um, for the standard combo route of Brain Freeze. So maybe that's what's being tutored for, um, given that, well, uh, Grim Tutor of course gets exiled by the Dried Militant, so that's not going to be reusable later. If Simple Man hits a land here, getting down the Canonist and having two creatures that Trekkie essentially has to deal with before... Well, I guess Trekkie may have gone for Toxic Deluge. That would be an option. Um, so even if Simple Man did draw land, he may be inclined not to, to cast another creature into the Wrath Effect pre-combo. Um, but also only leaving one... Okay. Fiddle push, uh, presumably on the militant. Does he have the rest of it put together? Uh, Lotus Breach isn't 
lethal unless there's another tutor in Trekkie's hand. Because you can't transmute out of your graveyard. That's not going to be able to find the brain freeze. Well, there's the Lotus. There's the Breach. Sacking Lotus. Rhystic, tu <laughs> Rhystic Study. Or a Rhystic Tutor, not Rhystic City. Uh, yeah, so um, Simple Man does not have a second mana to prevent the tutoring off of Rhystic Tutor, which means Brain Freeze is happening. Uh, Lotus can be recast from the yard and make blue. And uh, this looks like it's it's done. Um, very rough start for a Simple Man game three, but that's just how it goes sometimes.